Let's look at the difference between normal waking and altered states of consciousness in terms of the levels of awareness. And we need to start by defining these two concepts. A normal waking consciousness is a state in which our thoughts, feelings, perceptions are clear, organized, and meaningful. And we can distinguish a normal waking consciousness from an altered state based on six psychological characteristics. And we'll go into depth with these shortly. On the flip side of the coin, an altered state of consciousness is different from a normal waking consciousness in terms of spot FM, in terms of your sensations, your perceptions, your thoughts, your feelings, your memories. These, when we're in an altered state of consciousness, are diminished or distorted. For instance, when you're in a meditative state, asleep, right down the bottom of that continuum of consciousness in a coma. But the two ones we need to focus on for the Unit 3 course are daydreaming and an alcohol-induced state. Daydreaming is naturally occurring, as opposed to a meditative state which is purposely induced. You choose to go into a meditative state. A daydreaming occurs in a cyclical fashion resembling your circadian rhythm, your body clock. There's a variety of theories on why we daydream. Freud's wish fulfillment theory, memory consolidation, as indicated by the reduction of activity in your thalamus, the conduit which relays information to your brain, and there are a variety of benefits for daydreaming. Alcohol-induced state. Well, alcohol is a depressant. Not so much in that it makes your mood sour, we well, can do that, but it slows or inhibits the functionality of your central nervous system. So you get this reduced conscious awareness, reduced perceptions, mood alterations, reduced cognition, etc. So in terms of differences between NWC and ASC, let's start with your content limitations. And this is one of those dichotomous aspects of the course. You need to clearly indicate to assessors you know the difference between selective and divided attention. Selective attention requires maximum mental effort. So our content is limited to the task at hand, like the, our friend here about to dive off the three metre springboard. All he's thinking about is getting his walk up right, getting his jump right, putting the right amount of effort into his jump so he gets the right height, when to tuck, etc. He's not thinking about what he's going to have for dinner. His content is limited to the task at hand. Divided on attention, on the other hand, our content is less limited because it requires only minimal mental effort to complete the task. So walking, if we know where we're going and we're in a comfortable environment, e.g. we're walking around Alpha Park Lake, then we can do other tasks like having a chat, listening to music, etc. So our content is less limited when we're in divided attention. So when we're daydreaming or in an alcohol-induced state, Divided attention is okay. We can carry out tasks only requiring divided attention because of the minimal mental effort required. If we're trying to use selective attention and we're daydreaming or alcohol-induced state, then our performance will be impaired. Content limitations. There's an overlap here with selected and divided attention. If we're completing a task which is a requires a controlled process, we can do this, or we do this with selective attention. A lot of mental effort is required. We can only focus on one thing at once. So for instance, when I'm trying to hit a double in darts, I need to just focus on that tiny piece of the board. It's not helping me if I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do in class tomorrow with my psychology class, or let's say where I'm gonna go on holidays at the end of the year. I need to use a lot of mental effort in order to hit that double. Automatic processes require minimal mental effort, so we do these with divided attention. Therefore, we can multitask. And a good illustration of the difference between automatic and controlled processes is your Stroop Effect experiment. I won't go into that now due to time restrictions. Perceptual and cognitive distortions. So when we're in normal waking consciousness, we can accurately process sensory input, sounds, visions, etc. pain. When we're in an altered st state of consciousness, our perceptions can be distorted. We can hallucinate, we've got diminished pain, etc. We might um, not process certain sounds or visual information when we're driving, even though we shouldn't be driving. In terms of co our cognition, well, when we're in a normal waking consciousness, we can make sense of our thoughts, etc. We can rationalize information. But when we're in an altered state, our thoughts can become disorganized. 
when we're having a weird dream, when we're in a drug-induced state. We might become paranoid when we're drunk, etc. So when we're daydreaming, we might have a reduced, well, we will have reduced attention. We won't be able to take in what our psychology teacher is saying, a cognitive distortion. When we're in an alcohol-induced state, we have reduced perceptions. I know a lot of you are underage, but one day you might get drunk, you might fall over, and generally you think you'd hurt yourself, but when you're in an alcohol-induced state, there's reduced sensory input going to the brain, you wake up sober the next day, and all of a sudden you're feeling that pain that you should have felt the night before but didn't because of your altered state. Emotional awareness, when we're in a normal waking consciousness, we exhibit the appropriate emotions based on situations, when we're given good news, bad news, etc. When we're in an altered state, our emotions become detached and we may go either way, being excessively sad or excessively happy in an inappropriate sense. Self-control, when we're in a normal waking consciousness, we can control our behaviour and our thoughts. Altered states can e um, either enhance our self-control, helps us gain control over addictions, etc., gambling, smoking, alcohol, or we may lose or have reduced self-control depending on what type of um, altered state we're experiencing. In terms of our perception of time, well, when we're in a normal waking consciousness, we can clearly perceive whether it's night, day, twilight, etc. And we've got a fair idea of how much time has elapsed. When we're in an altered state of consciousness, we can perceive time being accelerating or seeming slow. Have you ever had a power nap that felt like you're out for a couple of hours and you look at the clock and you've only actually been out for 10 minutes? Or what about the opposite situation? Have you ever gone to sleep and the alarm's gone, gone off and you've only felt like you've had half an hour but you've been in bed for eight hours? hope that's helped.